hello, welcome to our NIM uh, podcast. Uh, it's an overview of what we've achieved uh, the last month. And, um, well, Miran is first on, on our list. So welcome, Miran, and please tell us uh, about your achievements. Okay, thanks. Uh, so uh, in last month, basically what I did is written here. So first off is improved CSS for documentation. And the results are already seen in Devil Docs. So the first thing you will notice is a larger font and more contrast. The, there were some inconsistent styles that are now fixed and typography in general was improved in my opinion. And as a side effect also we have now uh, our documentation is much nicer to view on mobile. So if you want to use your mobile phone to browse documentation, now you can do it. Other than that, uh, what we started uh, last month is nimble package tests. So it started with, I think, five packages tested. Now it's 42 packages and there were some uh, broken packages. So uh, fixes were sent upstream. So those are now fixed. Also, we fixed some regressions because of it. So in the end, I think this is a good idea and we will continue to add more packages to these tests. Also, uh, just as last month, I worked on uh, improving documentation in general. So some old modules re uh, received uh, improved documentation. And this is not done only by me. It's also done by community. So thank you guys who are all already helping. You can see their names in this issue. 10330 and I will add the link to the description later. And there is still more work to do, so if anybody wants to join us, please do. Your help is very so, welcome. So, uh, question we test uh, 42 packages with with Devil, right? Yes. So, it means Devil uh, works with these packages and but we we could also backport it so to to see how much works with uh, 0.19 well if they work with uh, devil they should work with 0.19 but yeah we, we can backport to see if if that's true because devil introduced some changes and now these changes are already fixed in in those packages so yeah i think it, they should work with previous versions too Okay. Yeah. And Very nice. Yeah, and the last thing is just uh, lots of issues were closed. I don't. I won't mention any of it because it doesn't make sense. But I think people can see uh, the count of issues is steadily going down. So I think that's improvement, and that's it for me. Okay. So I've been working on destructors most of the time. Um, there's good progress in here and that is like the the strings and sequences uh, are based on destructors now and uh, the string utilities module compiles and runs like that all of the tests are green which means that the new string and seek implementation is, is getting uh, stable uh, the next steps on this to do is to make uh, koch.nim work with the gc destructors mode and and then we can be like we can say like uh, there is now a considerable considerable subset of nim working without the the garbage collector for the in in the domains where where it's better um then i also um uh, merged the the carax dom Modules and the SNM standard lim, lim, library store uh, modules, so there's little uh, friction between these left. Um, and then I researched like uh, how to uh, um, ensure memory safety without the garbage collector and uh, we now have a Proposal in the works, but before I uh, blog about this proposal, I, I want to have uh, a prototype implementation with this new feature for, for people to try out and so that they can uh, uh, 
yeah give 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 us some some value uh, valuable feedback because if I just uh, write down the proposal people uh, I I don't think it's it's easy to to understand the the consequences of this and uh, so before I propose it I need to have some kind of implementation to for for me and for others to tinker with um, so. But it's it's good news. So we will have the full NIM language without the garbage collector and uh, as as convenient to use as before. Uh, in my opinion, we'll see about that. But it it's it, it looks on paper it uh, it looks very very good. I also worked on the package testing for the uh, continuous integration. So I, I started with these Nimble packages and then Miran took over and added much more. Um, and together we also worked on uh, cleaning up system Nim. So the IO sub, subsystem is now our moved outside of uh, system.nim. And there's also, uh, we will also uh, uh, extract the, the assertion handling out of system Nim and to, to clean it up. With the idea that it, NIM becomes even easier to use for for embedded systems where you don't have uh, the, the the classical I/O operations or or just think about the JavaScript backend and in, in JavaScript you cannot uh, uh, read from a file etc. So it it makes sense to to um, to not have this uh, in in system NIM. Okay, that's uh, what I've been working on, and now let's go to Arne. Okay, yes, I was working on 32-bit uh, bugs, meaning I was running NIM on a 32-bit uh, operating system, run all the test cases and make sure that everything works. Uh, Within the bugs, there were some or many VM-related bugs, also virtual machine-related bugs for the NIM virtual machine, and they are uh, fixed as well uh, as a side effect. Then I went through, uh, because I use GDB for debugging NIM, and whenever I encounter something that is tedious or something that's an easy improvement for GDB debugging, I will improve it, so I did that. There is now some commands that you can execute directly from NIMGDB. That's NIM, Nimble, and Koch. You can just start your compiler right from the GDB uh, interpreter. Then um, I put some effort into stack traces of not in and uh, not equals because uh, these two operators are based on templates, the line information was not optimal in stack traces. You got line information pointing into system.nim when there was really not, not the location you wanted to have for it. So some specialized optimizations for that. Then I was at uh, FOSDEM in um, Brussels representing NIM, uh, meeting some uh, people from the NIM community. It was a really good experience. Um, I would go there again. Um, next thing I worked on was missing case labels, meaning when you have an incomplete case statement with that... Uh, yes, yeah, a case with some enum value and uh, you didn't put all values in there, then the error message now tells you which, which uh, values of the enum you're missing. Previously, you just said not all cases are covered, but it didn't tell you which was missing, which was pretty annoying when you had some bigger enums. So say we have this and NIM requires you to list all the possible cases and it used to say, uh, so it used to say not all cases are covered. 
And now it says, not all cases are covered missing. Yeah, very B is missing. Okay. Um, very, very nice. Uh, yeah, it was uh, actually, well, I was bothered by it that it wasn't there, so I just fixed it. This was overdue. I mean, I, I've noticed it and couldn't, but never implemented it. And people reported it multiple times. And uh, so, yeah. Okay. Um, yes, then I was uh, working on the documentation. This is part of uh, the tutorial, the NIM tutorial. In the NIM tutorial, I figured out some problem where it introduced tuples as a value type and objects as a reference type, or at least it introduced ref objects. And then you could think that objects are reference type by default, which was wrong. That's what I fixed. And I fixed it by reordering it. I make sure that uh, people learn first about object as the default way to structure data. Then I go to tuples and then I go for in, in object oriented proto uh, programming and tell them you can also do a ref object, which has overhead. It's a, 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 I re remember a lot of people in the IRC forum uh, or IRC chat thinking that objects always have an, an object header overhead, like in Java. That's not the case. And I was, wrong about that in the beginning when I learned about NIM2. So I'm pretty happy that that one was fixed. Um, and then um, there was some regression in the NIM compiler that I fixed together with ARAC that made my OpenGL sandbox project uh, not compile anymore. Uh, OpenGL sandbox is a project from me that I'm pretty proud of. It is an environment where you can uh, compile NIM code to uh, GLSL. So it, it, it's in a mixed environment where you just write one program and you say this part of the program should run on the uh, GPU and um, the macro system that I, or the macros that I wrote will compile the block of code into GLSL and run it on the GPU and it will have all sorts of analyzations. For example, what variables are you uh, accessing? What data are you accessing? Then it generates all the communication for it and make sure that it works. And it's really, when you know how it works, it's, it's really fast prototyping on uh, shader development or generally on graphics programming. Nice. Um, then I went some issues. There was a reported issue on um, infant non handling in JSON. Currently, uh, the JSON serializer writes infant non like it is in NIM style. It just prints infant non, and that is not in the spec. The spec basically forbids inf and none, which puts you in the very uncomfortable situation that you cannot serialize inf and none through JSON at all. Other serializers um, either throw an error. In, in Go, it's an error. In uh, JavaScript, it just prints uh, null values there, which is a bit weird. And basically, when you go to the spec, you are just screwed in 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 a state where you, you have to break it. And uh, Python, I think it breaks. I made some proposal, it was rejected, but uh, I have a new new proposal that I will work on and um, that will be fixed. So people can say what, uh, what way they want to have these values uh, treated. For example, they can say, I want it to be compatible with Python or with C sharp or to throw an error or what, yeah, very good. Um, and then uh, JSON at compile time, meaning you should now be able to pass JSON from at compile time. You can open a file at compile time, pass it, and then you have the JSON data at compile time, which had some effects on other parsers as well. So 
the PR was bigger than I thought it would be. I thought it was just a small, tiny operational change. Yes, then. but uh, on the other hand, it's not just uh, not just uh, JSON at compile time, but also all the other parsers work at compile time now, like uh, SQL and uh, PEX. Does PEX work? Maybe. <laughs> yes, yes, I fixed PEX. I didn't test it, but it, there's no reason it doesn't work. Ah, <laughs> well... Okay, there's this chance of having it work now. Uh, Packs and, and what else? Like, there are more parts like uh, XML. These are more yes. important. Yeah, very nice progress. Um, I think we covered it all now. Um, uh, thank you for listening. See you the next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.